And I believe we are live! Good day, good day, my dear fellow friends. My name is Raven Marine, aka Thunburn One, and welcome to another Thuncast. Where today it is episode 21 of season 3. Ah, my dear fellow friends, we have reached so far into the community and reached so far and wide that we have touched the hearts of many people who have improved themselves each day during times of peril and during times of need. And with the new introduction of Season 3 comes with new updates, specially, specially given suggestions by the community themselves, so changes will be made. Now, we have a special guest here, a man who is similarly worded upon the community, who actually was once a commissar, but now a full-on Dark Angel space brain. I give you the man, the myth himself, Pov! Do tell me- Hello! Pov, how was your day? Ah, oh, my day's been amazing. I've been- I've been excited for the fun cast. Ah, it's good to hear. Many people wanted to come down here and get themselves interviewed so they can give their fair share of opinion on what Caldega feels like on the Space Marine and also the Cadian perspective. Now, oh, hell yeah. Now, I'm glad that I also have you here because we can hear a bunch of magnificent stories that you'll have for us today. Also, I'm going to let you know that these videos will not be edited in any sort of way in order to capture the funny and interesting moments of the Calde of the Thumbcast. Also, on another note, with the new changes of season three, we'll be giving out the options to the new to the new guests who would want to either do the random topic or or being interviewed. So, my dear friend Pub, you have two options. Talk about something random within the Caldega Prime community, or talk about, or do an interview about yourself. Let's, uh, let's do the questions. Yeah, let's do that. Ah, splendid. Alright, give me a minute as I pull them up real quick. Now, due to, the, now due to some of these Thuncast questions, they are not edited. Well, they are not have been changed. I'll probably be able to do something or do more questions later on in the near future since we're going to be doing this for season three, and they'll be revolving more on the um, future. All right. So, first question. First question. How did you find the IOM community? Um. So I, I came uh, into like uh, this genre when uh, one of my friends. I, I started off. I was already in the. Warhammer 40k like genre as a whole in a different community then we came over here as uh, from Thousand Suns and started Crimson Suns that was like a whole debacle you know with Threntus's group leaving and then we came in as soon as we came in so that was uh, that was a good time I'd say uh, but yeah I came in coming in with a different bunch of people who now have mostly left but like um, some of them are still around one of them still uh, in Eldar uh, the guy that actually brought me into the whole genre as a whole. Uh, but yeah, I don't actually know what he's doing anymore, but I've sort of went on my own way now in the uh, Imperium of Man now. But yeah, that's how I came into the genre. Mm, fascinating. It's good to know that you were the last people of... Well, sorry, the last person who was able to stay. Luckily enough, you still prevailed in every sort of trial and tribulation. Now I actually wonder if you if you would accept a different change if you became a commissar, a full fledged one, I would say. Uh, well, I I actually never became a full commissar. I, I only became a cadet commissar uh, during my time in the Astromotarum and then the officio prefectus or whatever it's called nowadays. Um, yeah, I uh, I well, I, I, I at first I was a Kazakhan corporal. Well, obviously Kazkin, then Kazkin Corporal. But um, uh, then uh, I got, like, I was one of the first, like, one of the first batch of Cadet Commissars, along with Barbetus, uh, JT, and Heracles Pelagalos. Pelagalos or something like that. So that was a very good time. I got assigned to 
well, I got asked if I wanted to help the Krieg regiment, like, uh, just in general. So I did. That was a very fun time. Like, I helped Seko get them active, helped, uh, had Barbitas there, had uh, Jirais there. It was, it was a pretty good time. We got Krieg very active for a time. Uh, and then, uh, then I went into Dark Angels after that. My dear friend, allow me to ask you a little question, and if you wish, you would want to answer or not. But do you regret becoming a space marine, knowing that you have given up the opportunity to actually live up to a title of becoming the first commissar, or at least leading the guardsmen to victory? So, <laughs> that's a very interesting question, because, um, like, yeah, I, I, don't, well, I don't regret it, because it's a whole different new thing. Like, the Ashmel Tarum, like, uh, what I was doing there and what I'm doing now are so completely different. They're, like, they're not really comparable. Obviously, I like, I really miss being in the Ashmel Tarum and being a cadet commissar. Like, I miss, uh, like, all of uh, my sergeants in the Kriegs, like, the Watchmasters. Like, right before I left, I had to scramble to try and teach the new NCOs of the Krieg to, like, how to do their job so that when I left, they'd be decent. And uh, some of them are now, like, full Watchmasters. So that's pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, like, I do really miss it. I I remember, like, the first few weeks of uh, joining and being an aspirant, I was, like, I kept, uh, like, my sort of schedule was that I would think, I would, on my way to work, I'd think about topics to bring up to officer meetings and, like, uh, and then be ready for, like, inspection and stuff like that. And then uh, the first two weeks, I, I kept doing that. I kept thinking, and then I remember I uh, messaged a few officers to, like, bring up those topics that I thought up during the officer meeting, because I just, I, I still hadn't, like, fully come to terms with the fact that I'm no longer in the SML Tarum. Uh, yeah, I really do miss it. Um, I have even, like, thought, like, very briefly about leaving the Dark Angels to go back to the SML Tarum, just because... I miss just chilling with, like, Clone and Bofides and, like, all them, and, like, just everyone else, Barbidas, Jib, Jiba, who's no longer there, Revenant as well, but, uh, yeah, no, I don't, I, I've, I've come to terms with being in the studies, and I'm very happy with, uh, making that change for myself, yeah. Hmm, very well story, well said, and truly some regrets were made, but triumphs were obtained, you became a space marine. Actually, oh yes, you became Space Marine, who has demi like abilities. You are the main shield of the unit. You basically is responsible for taking on the most heavy hitters of of the enemies of Chaos. And the uh, mostly Necrons and Eldar. Although, you can you even count Eldar? I mean, yeah, can you even count Eldar anymore? Either way, uh, yeah. either way I'm glad that you have come to terms between what you could have been and what you have decided to be. First question, very well answered. Second question, what are you going, what is, sorry, what was your journey like in the IOM community? <laughs> oh god, now that, that is a story and a half. Um, so like, I joined uh, after the Crimson Sun sort of disbanded on uh, like sort of amical terms, but I joined uh, IOM to like waste time because I wanted to create my own faction with my half of uh, Crimson Sun's followers. I uh, did that for a very short time in a different genre, but closed it down because I loved the Imperium of Man so much, and I just wanted to put all my time into it, and I now am doing that, and, well, have been doing that. Oh, wait, so that was wait, good. Wait, 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 I do apologize. But if, I'm, but if I remember correctly, by the way, it's been a long time. Um, <laughs> you, you, were, you were the person, actually, you, you were the person who was actually trying to bring the uh, Farsight Enclave into the... Enclave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, that little wondrous dream that you have. I even joined your community server heavy thing to see yeah. how it would to see how it would go. To see how you would probably make a change into the community itself. Yeah, yeah. I uh I, I got it fairly active in like uh in a different genre, obviously. But then as I was putting more time into IOM I just decided that I could not, like I just liked IOM more. So I, I closed that down. Then I gave it to someone else to run, and then just let them do things, and then they stopped giving time. So I just shut down that project, and yeah, that's 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 a closed chapter. But 
uh, after that happened, I think uh, I I was in MT and uh, Soria San at that time was my uh, Kazakhan corporal. He's a very chill guy. I love him. And um, uh, essentially, at that point, I was I was gunning for like I think my my goals kept changing there as well. Um, uh, I wanted to go be an inquisitor. I wanted to have my own regiment. I wanted to become a chapter master, which is my current goal, and I'm working towards that. Um, but yeah, I've, I've IOM absolutely great community. Love everyone. Uh, made some really good friends. Uh, from like. My my batch of aspirants like Jose, Grumpy, and Sturm, absolute top boys. Literally love them so much. Uh, Sturm, who used to be known as Lololololol KX DJ, I gave him money to change his name because I hated it so much. Like I hated logging his name when I hosted events, so I made sure that I would never have to type out Lololol KX DJ blah 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 oh, any more times. That. Yeah, you remember that? Bro, <laughs> that I was. Believe, I believe when I was in MCO position as well, it was so frustrating when I had to do that. And, and by far, I kind of wanted that. I kind of wanted that. Yeah. Why? Why does the it was... person have to come in? I have to come in! It was awful. <laughs> it was oh. awful. It was awful. So I made sure to just, you know, like change everyone's life, you know, improve it by changing Sturm's name. And now, and now, yeah. But yeah, Jose, Sturm, Grumpy, my day ones, love them to bits. They're, they are, they are my guys. Um, Grumpy's scout sergeant in the uh, Dark Angels, so that's chilling. Uh, yeah, other friends I've made. I, I, I would class both and clone as my friends, I guess. Um, but yeah, like, also, my time in IOM, I, uh, some people might know, but I, I changed the entire spreadsheet structure of the Astromel Tarum when I was a cadet commissar, because that's another thing that I hated. The previous spreadsheets I really hated. Um, I've put credit, like, I think I made a I put a note on each of the spreadsheets that everyone now uses, like made by Calcios, just so I have my own lasting impact in a, in a small sense on this group that can never be erased. Or at least I hope no one will erase because that'd be very sad. But yeah, those spreadsheets, I still to this day, my the pinnacle of my achievement in the SML Tarum did Cadia, Krieg, and the MT. Hell yeah, the trifecta. But yeah, my time in IOM has been great. Ah, truly fascinating. Something to truly remember by and truly be proud of. A man who was actually was going to make history at the time, but sadly decided to switch something else. But in the end, you still end up being successful. Do tell me, do you regret that you could have made something of the far side enclave if you had waited? Like... Ah, uh, that's honestly no, because um, the community, the people, uh, the community of the IOM, I just fully prefer them so much more. Like, I don't have uh, many bad things to say about like a single person in there, if any at all. Um, and the Farsight Enclave, like, there's not been uh, a new faction wave since uh, in the genre as a whole since like the first one. So I would have still been waiting if I was Farsight Enclave to this day. And that's a very long time to wait. I think it's been like four months, nearly. So like, and I am not a patient person. I'm a very unpatient person. So I probably would have ended that by now. But uh, yeah, no, I'm not too, uh, not too regretful about shutting down Farsight Enclave. I love IOM far too much. Truly well said, my dear friend. First, I mean, sorry, second question, very well said. Oh, wait, allow me to do something real quick. There is an unfortunate matter that I had to attend to. Do not worry, I will not be long. That's alright. I wonder if this is going to make the thumbcast. Hoorah. I wonder if this is going to get edited out. <laughs> well, if this isn't getting edited out, 
Hello, Funcast. You're now being hijacked by the podcast. Um, don't know what to say, really. Um, hope your day's been fine, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hope Krieg's doing well. Well, doing better than Kadia. Krieg on top. Hoorah, baby. <laughs> I do apologize, um, I, I really do. If you want to really, oh, okay, never mind, I thought I would have, uh, I'm sorry, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, uh, I can hear you. I unmuted my, um, um, OBS audio, but not my audio audio, so, so do apologize. I was actually trying to see if I could give them a sort of time to go back or skip forward, but uh, I can't even do that because I haven't been keeping track. Anyway, so let's just continue. We already That's delayed, all right. We already delayed so far. Alright. <laughs> Third question. What's your position like in the IOM community? Um, I don't really know. Um, I feel like I have like a close uh, knit like group of friends that I have. Um, I, I don't think I'm, I don't think that I'm well known, uh, but I think that people do know of me, sort of. I don't really know. Uh, I don't really think about it too much. Uh, I guess uh, if uh, if I like in DA, I'd say I'm not very well known. In the uh, Astromel Tarum, if I had uh, continued on my path, I like I would have very likely have been quite known. I uh, I was uh, almost like a a candidate to become the next Krieg CEO. Like I can I wasn't going to be made it, but I was going to be in a pool of people that could have been potentially chosen. So there was the chance for that. Uh how I uh how close I would have been to that, I don't know, because there's obviously Jarius and Barbetus who would have most likely also been contending for that. So and they're absolutely top notch lads themselves. So but like obviously, my position in the community as a whole, I'd say I'm just a, I'm just a guy, you know, just just chilling, you know. I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, like start any beef or anything. I'm just trying to work on myself, trying to become the, the next chapter master of the Imperium and all that good stuff, you know. Hmm. Truly, a well built goal to keep an eye on. Hmm. You know, I actually wonder. You're a spaceman, right? What does it feel yeah. like? What does it feel to wear the armor of a demigod? <laughs> well, now, yeah, it's pretty damn good. Like, uh, I love being a space marine. I, uh, uh, the difference between being a guardsman and a, and a, and a, and a what, you, what are they called? Space marines? Jesus, how did I forget? Um, yeah, the difference is crazy. Uh, I won't lie. You gotta, you don't have to think as much being a space marine. But also, when you do, it is so fun. Like, being a space marine and being, like, absolutely bogged down with enemies, just being in an absolutely target-rich environment, you know? Like, it's just... It is those moments of where, like, you're completely outnumbered. Like, there was a, a few days ago, I think, there was, like, a huge Chaos Rally. There was Eldar. There was Necrons. All of that, that was... I think that was peak Caldega for me. Um, like, that was probably in second place uh, against my, uh, I think it was a raid against the Votan. That, that, yeah, it's been a space marine. It's absolutely a sick, just amazing feeling, to be honest. I'm glad that you know the armor that you wear. Truly, it is something that no one was able to put into words such as yours. Both, wait, wait. Third question, very well said. Fourth question. What are you going to do with the near future in the IOM community? Well, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm absolutely praying <laughs> to potentially become like a chaplain or in the Dark Angels and hopefully move up further into like chapter command and then eventually be like a candidate for chapter master. Like, I'm just 
you know, I just had got my head down, you know, working. Um, there's, I just, I just want to be in a position of command because I think uh, that I'm not very good at sitting still and not having like a sense of responsibility over a, a group that I'm very passionate about. I love to have my grubby little fingers in uh, dealings, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that. I'm just I'm just trying to work up. I just I love being in a position of authority and responsibility. I think I thrive in those environments. Hmm. Okay. A true a true goal to at least keep your eye on. But wait, I thought you wanted to become a chapter master, and this is just yeah. like calling back to wait. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> now I now I get the point. Yeah. Is there anything else you would want to add to this fourth question, or you want to pursue on? Uh, no, don't, I, don't, I just, like, no, nah, not really. Yeah, that's about it. Mm. Okay. Fourth question, very well answered. Fifth question. What are you going to... I mean, sorry. What do you think of the Iron community as a whole, beyond every faction, Beyond everything that has happened throughout the community and so on, what do you think of it all? Well, if if we're talking about the entire genre, like the Dark Millennium genre as a whole, um, I I think everyone's pretty chill. I don't think there's anyone that's trying to cause a cause a good old ruckus. I think uh, everyone just got just doing their own thing, playing their position. Uh, some people uh, might might be complaining a little bit. But, like, that's to be expected, realistically, in any, like, genre that anyone's in. There's always going to be people that complain, or... Even then, even if they complain, it doesn't mean that they they don't like it. It's just something's nagging them, or something like that. Uh, I think the community of the genre is a very positive one, to be honest. I don't think anyone has, like, uh, beef or anything like that. I think everyone's just playing a game. It's and I think uh, the uh, like the universe, like the law, the Warhammer Forty K, the Warhammer, the wider Warhammer Forty K community. Like I think the fact that it's a sort of older generational sort of like tendency to be older. I feel like people are less uh, aggressive or like well, like that sort of vibe. Um, but yeah, everyone's just really positive. Uh, I think overall. I don't think there's any actual bad actors. It's everyone's just doing their own thing, having fun, trying to climb, you know? I think it's great. I think it's great. It's one of the best communities I've ever been in, and I've been in a very many. Mm, okay. Truly well said. But wait. I, if I'm correct, actually, no. You weren't in the IOM back in the days, correct? No, I'm actually fairly new. I think uh, I joined uh, IO, like, the uh, Imperium of Man uh, on the 11th of March. That's exactly when I joined. Um, and I think I was in Crimson Suns for, like, a couple weeks before then. So I probably joined somewhere around, like, the 20th of February, somewhere around that. Um, but, yeah, I'm not an OG at all, to be honest. I'm fairly, fairly new. Just been done. Just been gaming, honestly. Oh, uh, yeah, so now I remember. Alright. Um, oh yes, fifth question, very well answered. Now, final question. What is the one thing that you would want in the IOM community? Now, do note that this one thing actually has to be one thing within a one of the universe. So choose wisely. Alright, um... Oh god. Well, to be honest, the only thing that could really, like... Let's say if we're improving Caldega in its current state, it'd probably just be vehicles. But that's already being worked on, so I don't think that's really relevant. Um, maybe, like, just more variety of guns, so that each class has, like, a, like, a few playstyles that it could be playing, and, like, just evening out the the meta, I guess, but that's difficult to do in a, like a, in a universe like Warhammer 40k where the power scaling is absolutely insane. So, I, I just think improving like a variety of playstyles that each class could potentially do 
but obviously there's like guardsmen recons and stuff like that but uh, yeah i'd say it's just a little a little bit more variety i don't know like for example uh space marines just like the tactical class give them a stalker bolter bang that's like a different thing that they could be doing but obviously stalker bolters with space marines also just don't make sense but that's that's i just think a little bit more variety in guns maybe that's the only thing Ooh, okay more variety of guns would need more content more content would need more battle more more battle experience and actually ask ask the person will you have attached to your gun just see a person with exactly. a bunch of lights on their last gun. <laughs> I call it the exactly. blind gun. <laughs> exactly. You like they can't shoot back at you if they can't see. Oh. It's like staring at the sun. <laughs> oh boy, I really want the attachment concept to be implemented into County. That'd be crazy. Yeah, one of these days. However, my dear friend, you have answered all the questions very well. And so far, to boot with that, you have actually given a good, wide opinion about everything. I, uh, I try my best. <laughs> yes. I truly thank you for coming on for the Thumbcast and truly, well, truly giving us a good perspective within yours. But here's a little question. What if, out of the blue, that Algo, or John, decides to open back that faction application once more? Could you say that you could leave everything behind and go and and go and try to make the try to make the far side enclave come to reality? Oh, absolutely not, man. Imperium of Mankind is where it's at for me, and I think I think genuinely this group will just be it for me. I I don't think anything will ever come close to it. I I don't really even have a want to join other like Roblox groups. It's just too much fun here, man. That is the same experience that I had. The moment when I saw this group and when uh, when Matt, my dear friend of mine, was able to show me around, I truly felt home. I truly felt wondrous in this place. And I finally felt home. This place exactly. reminded me of the time when I was once a space marine. <laughs> and that was a long experience. Fun fact, by the way, you want to know how long no. it took me to become a space marine in that other group? Ah, uh, I'm fairly certain you were you were in MT for quite a while because no, I no, think no, you were. No, 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 no. This is like full on a long time ago. I <laughs> Go know on. That IOM or I think IOM didn't exist. I haven't been doing the um the date the date math right, but no. I know one thing's for sure when I. I know that one thing's for sure. I was at least ten years old for when the group had retire. When the group right. had retire. Yep, I remember. Yep, I remember. But you know how long it took for me to become a, a full on chaplain of a Templar? Not much of a space marine. Go on. It took me at least a year. Oh God. <laughs> no. Oh you, God. You know, hear me out. Their, their way of promoting space marines was hard-fetched. They did it, like, they do it exactly here, but it takes much, but it takes, um, le no, not less. It just takes time, which being in months, if anything. Weeks, if you want to become a full space marine. But for me, it took a year. I had to go through at least <laughs> a long time of aspirin sake. Which was a pain, and back then, <laughs> and back then you had to be chosen, and I had to go through the full stages. I was even once a commissar before I got selected into Aspirancy. Next man that yeah. became a neophyte, which was almost seemingly like a blue. It was like a couple months, but Jesus Christ, the amount of battles I had to fight, the battle, the raid battles I actually had to attend. Which was here and there sometimes, but it was glorious. And then the final triumph, the space frames, were <laughs> the Iron Warriors in the old group I was in actually had assaulted the um Imperium of Man Imperium of Man one of the Imperium of Man Capital. Whoops, that was actually just repeated in my head for some apparent reason. 
And then for <laughs> me defending it for uh, with a fellow of my other neophyte brethren and a couple of Imperium of Man soldiers, I was finally deemed worthy. Not by my not by my chapter master, but my, but by the Emperor himself. <sighs> nice. What a time. Everyone was proud of me that day and I truly had achieved something. The only reason I actually came that far was because of my JRTC training that has been... Yes, my JRTC training. Fair enough. If you know what JRTC is. Yeah, yeah, I know. In the end, I truly felt proud of my position. And though that I had to get rid of my fellow brethren, who, well, was a nuisance sometimes, some... <sighs> I truly regretted because they were inactive. I had to do it because of the higher up order, but in the end, I truly fulfilled my duty well, and I have retired, well, the group have retired in great colors. And the final yeah, game yeah. that I had done with my fellow brothers was Assault a Furry Game I for, on Roblox. Oh. That's fair enough, honestly. Yes. We were, <laughs> we were following up on the trend of 140k space marines full on tearing apart furries. That, man, that makes sense. Makes sense to me. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot what furry game was it, but I believe it was the one that had bats. Well, that would like came like months afterwards beyond, the time, beyond retiring. The first one that we ever did was the one without the bats, and just we had to try to run away and survive. And the only and the only people that could attack at the time were the furries. But either way, <laughs> we just been bobbing and weaving, making jokes, full on saying for the emperor and everything. I, <laughs> that's a uh, one hell of a crusade to me. Yeah, you guys, if you guys were Black Templars back then, during that time, that's that's one hell of a crusade. Yep, I truly remember. However, my dear friend, you've answered, like I said, you've answered all five questions, sorry, six questions very well. Do you have anything to say before we end this wonderful podcast? Uh, probably not. No, I'm, um, yeah. Okay. I, 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 I'm, I think, well, okay, all right. Um, shout out to my boy Grumpy, shout out to my boy Stone, shout out to my boy Jose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... Yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say, really. I think I've said everything that I've wanted to say uh, on a podcast, like, in, in relation to your questions. Uh, I don't really have much more to say about the community as a whole, more. Um, everyone's chill. This this community is amazing. Love it. Hmm. Truly well said. And for you, my dear fellow friends and fellow viewers, you have a wonderful day and enjoy yourself. Thank you for the listening for these wonderful Thuncasts and truly giving a good experience and also a good interview on some of the newcomers and old. In the end, we are all great warriors who extend far and wide from any faction that we serve. As long as we have the determination to fight for our leaders, fight for the fight of the either the race or the um or the Xenos. Or the Xenos race, we shall be determined no matter what stands in our way, no matter the cost. Oh, and one more yeah. oh, and one more thing. There is something planned in the near future that I might be working on. So do expect that. However, uh -huh. welcome to season three with these new changes. Hoorah! You all have a wonderful day and farewell. Log end.